All right, I want to show um, where we're at with the application and where we're at specifically with our custom IoT payloads. Um, so here we're at our list of devices. We're going to go into the soil probe. Um, <clears throat> this is our debugger screen, helps with the development. Um, you can see we've got like GPS location found, a payload with the location, um, entered recovery mode. So when the device actually had an issue, it uh, put itself into a state where it could receive firmware updates. Um, so here's our telemetry. Um, over here's um, our last known battery voltage, uh, device ID, connection state. Um, information like that. Then we come to the map. Um, this is just the map of where the device has been. And uh, we're going to talk about templates right now. So uh, you as a firmware developer, you're going to have this GPS device that maybe has like a specific business functionality. Uh, so if you think about like, uh, say you're building a soil testing probe um, that goes out and you have the location and then reading, soil readings at those locations. Um, so what you as the firmware developer can do is you create this device and then we're going to create these templates, these data templates. Um, so the first template we're going to do, we're going to say, hey, I want to uh, <clears throat> publish the battery, volt battery status of the device. Um, so you create the template name, battery status, uh, the key, this is, the key is going to be what you're going to put in your firmware code. Um, so say you want to have like, battery status, something like that, whatever the key is, this is going to be the key that is going to go into your code um, that you're going to publish over the Azure IoT Hub. Uh, so then it's we say, is it location based? So for battery status, all we really care about is the time. We don't really care about where it's at when the battery status. I mean, maybe in your application you do, but for this, we're not going to. Um, so, and then the label, this is going to be the label for an attribute. Um, so voltage, so in your code, say you just want V to save um, payload or it may help with memory constraint stuff, just tighter variables. Um, and then we only have two data types right now, but for now, is, is this, that's going to be our float. So we want the battery voltage, and then let's also say um, we also have an enclosure that maybe pr produces heat. So we want to say like temp, what's the temp inside of there? Uh, it's a T, uh, it's a loop T so, so T will represent temp and that temp, and that's also a float. Uh, so here we're creating this attribute that again you're gonna you're connecting to an MQTT broker and Azure IoT Hub, and this is creating the shape of the object that you're gonna send over the wire. So um, this is not quite done yet. This is the shape of the definition of what you just created, not of the payload. So uh, we're gonna have a nice way to show the shape of the payload that you're sending over. Um, so that's battery status. Let's do another one. This is going to be our soil reading. So uh, actually, so soil reading. Uh, template key. Again, this is going to go in your, your firmware. So your device will have code to create a soil reading. And that soil reading will have some values. And you'll create this object on your device, publish it on publish that event onto an IoT hub or eventually an MQTT broker, a generic one. And then our system can then use that data. Um, so this soil reading is going to be location based. Um, we're going to say nitrogen is going to be something that, that we're going to look at. And it will just have N or if you want, you can do that. Whatever you want to use in your device, so that's going to be a float. Um, we want the depth. At what depth in the soil did you see this? Depth, the key, we'll just put D just for that uh, float. Um, and then let's also say uh, you're capturing force uh, with like a force gauge. We'll say F, float. Um, so the soil reading is location based because you're going to have add GPS location to put this there. So create our attribute template, uh, sat, soil. And then let's do one more. Um, this one is going to be another be another location, and then we're gonna say speed. This one uh, is more for like if you have a fleet, so this will be speed. Uh, location base, yes, miles per hour. Uh, attribute key, key, let's do MPH, and then this is also a float. Create attribute template. Okay, so it, you as a firmware developer, when you're creating or an IoT device creator, you have this edge device that's going to do all these business logic things like 
maybe takes how fast you're going with like a GPS units. So maybe you know uh, these, you have different analog sensors and you create these objects locally and then you're going to connect to get that data to the outside world. You're going to connect it to like an Azure IoT hub or an MQTT broker and this is going to be what you can do to create these events. Um, so what I want to show you now is the emulator. Um, so the emulator is actually, when you create your device, you have a device ID um, that again, your device is going to match with like an Azure IoT hub. And this emulator is going to match, what it's basically going to do is behind the scenes, there is an Azure IoT hub and your device will publish messages to it. This is abstracting that. So this is literally dropping messages onto that same IoT hub and will emulate it accordingly. Um, so here's your, on the left is your device templates. You got your battery status, um, which again, we just had temperature of the battery and the voltage of the battery. Uh, we had a soil reading, which is a location-based event. So we had force, nitrogen, depth. Um, and then because it's a location event, we added latitude and longitude. And over on the right, we have this map for testing purposes where if you put a dot, you, you basically can click and it'll uh, save your latitude and longitude just for testing purposes. Um, so we're, I'm just going to show like how the logging of this currently works. So let me say a force is 20 pounds per square inch. We'll get a, we'll get a label. Nitrogen, 60. Depth, 3 inches. Latitude, longitude. Let's put, put it right there. Uh, okay, so we're going to send the event. So we just sent the event. Um, so what happened is we literally, this endpoint just dropped the message onto an event hub, IoT hub, just like you as a firmware developer, device developer, would drop it on MQTT broker. Uh, so we're just going to come to the... the uh, we're going to come to the debugger. Okay, cool, 1032. <clears throat> okay, so this right now, we just have it as telemetry, but eventually we're going to give rich features around the map and uh, widgets where you can like display this data with, with this attribute in this strongly typed system, as well as all things like alerts and all kinds of cool things, Teams integrations. Uh, but anyway... Um, basically, what we have here is your list of attributes. Um, so here is our device attribute definition key, which you sent over, the value, the data type, and the label. And then we'll go down again. Here's the label of nitrogen, our data type of float, our device attribute key, which you're going to send up as a firmware developer, is this. Um, so then we captured, captured basically this template event. Um, so now we're going to take a look at a soil, uh, we're going to do the soil rating, we're going to do the battery status, so the temperature is going to be, uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the voltage is going to be 3.2 volts, uh, we're going to send the event, and in our debugger view, and again what this is doing is it's dropping a message on an Azure IoT hub, uh, 1034 came in, so the label is temp, and the value is 70. And then for the voltage, we got V, and that is 3.2. So that event came up. Um, the other one was a speed event, so we're going to do this. We're going to say 40 miles per hour, uh, latitude, longitude, we click a point, send event, come to the debugger and uh, this data is coming in uh, miles per hour speed event. Um, so what this is going to allow us to do is once we get this really harnessed, you're going to be able to configure this map and you're going to be able to place points, you're going to be able to place uh, different shapes and large, say large circles, small circles in, based on these attribute values. So we're going to say, say you want to have a red circle where there's a problem area with the soil reading, you're going to be able to say when a Nitrogen is over this amount, show a red circle as an alert. Uh, when the pressure, the force is high, or say it's average, you can put a green circle, do these things. Um, it's going to allow geo geofencing, um, all kinds of things. So we're trying to really nail uh, the templates. And then with those templates, uh, it'll allow you to build these nice, rich features on the map and then alerting. Um, the, and then again, the cool thing is this is not just going to work with our Azure IoT hub. You're going to be able to bring your own Azure IoT hub. So say you already have this device, you have this IoT hub, we're going to plug into it with the policies that Azure has so we can just have read access or read write access if you want. 
and then we'll be able to do all these rich uh, features. So that's where we're at with the app and with templates. Uh, stay tuned for next time.